Welcome back to another Alliance War. This time around, 4Loki is taking on BR Sup. This is an alliance that we faced twice last season, and we went 1-1 one one against these guys, so we know that we have to bring our A game if we want to take a victory here. We are 1-0 in the season. This is, of course, the second match of uh, Season 3, the second of t only 12, so uh, every single one of these wars really matters. we got to uh, bring our A game to every single war, uh, as a matter of fact, so... Yeah, uh, I'm definitely going to be trying my best here, and as I said in the last video, I'm trying to go this entire season without a single death. I uh, was, uh, was kind of uh, talking some smack in my own Alliance chat about how I'm not going to die. People took some screenshots, so I really hope I don't die, otherwise it's going to be pretty embarrassing. Uh, and last war, I did not die. Uh, this war, I'm going to go ahead and pop on a 15% health boost and a 20% champion boost. Uh, as you may notice, I don't have Medusa with me. I have Stark Spidey, Void, and Blade. Blade is not actually going to be used. He's just used for the poise charges, specifically for this first initial fight. This fight has Limber, Aggression Fury, so if you're not attacking into the enemy, they're getting Fury the entire time, and uh, Unblockable Special 1. So the whole thing about this node is, you know, you don't really want to spend a whole lot of time building up poise charges because they're gaining fury the entire time. So if I can have those poise charges just from having blade, the, the blade synergy with me, uh, that's going to be a great deal of help. Uh, especially with, uh, with this node having limber, you don't have that many free openings off of the parry stones to, uh, to clear off those furies. Uh, but fortunately, uh, with, with those three initial uh, poise charges, uh, he goes down without too much trouble. And that is pretty much the reason why I want to take uh, Stark Spidey to uh, to rank 5 as well. Just because uh, it's going to make that node you know, just that much safer to, to take down in the future. Hopefully I can pull a, uh, a blade as well, a 5 star blade, uh, and, and take him to rank 4 and, and use him on this path too. That would be nice for, for certain fights. Uh, potentially. Anyway, on to the next node. We have a Bane node. I'm actually going to pop in a vulnerability boost. Not really for this node. It's it's uh, you know it's going to carry over to the next fight. The next fight I was a little bit more worried about. This one uh, I wasn't sure who I was going to see. Uh, you know, as you can see, it, it's uh, uh, oh my goodness, I forget the guy's name. Crossbones. <laughs> it's crossbones. I was asking my alliance like, what skill champion could be on this node? I really had no clue. Uh, I was thinking maybe maybe. Um, Taskmaster might be on this node. Uh, we saw a Killmonger on the map, so I didn't think it was going to be a Killmonger, but I, I had no clue it was going to be. Uh, in any case, all I'm looking to do is get some clean Bane transfers. You can see Bane is ticking away for, for quite a bit against this guy. Uh, and uh, even if my debuffs got shrugged off, I, I wasn't too worried about it. I just want to get the, uh, the Bane going. He was pretty stingy with the L1, so I baited out a heavy attack to uh, trigger that, uh, that Bane on him once again. Finally, he does throw the L1. I could have just hit him with the L2, and it probably would have killed him. Uh, but instead, I don't, and I slip up, and I start taking some Bane damage. So I immediately pop my L3, and I'm just hoping that this is going to be enough damage to kill him. He's only got 10% HP. I do have uh, a few points in Assassin, so this should do it. And boom, there we go. Sentry gets... Uh, Sentry gets a kill this war. Beautiful. Uh, Alright, next node up, and I'm going to try to be a little bit quick here to make sure that my boost is still active. There we go, still got a minute and a half left on it, so plenty of time. This is Buffet, uh, Recovery, Limber, and I'm thinking this might be a Medusa. There was a Medusa on the map on one of the mini-bosses, but I was thinking, uh, you know, maybe these guys aren't fully diverse. Maybe this is going to be a Medusa as well, since Medusa... Uh, has been seen on this node uh, fairly fairly commonly in the past. So thinking, all right, we, we have ourselves a Medusa here. But no, it's actually Hyperion. Okay, well, the invulnerability boost is still going to be good for this, just in case he gets to an L3. Sometimes you just can't get Hyperion to throw a special, and uh, you know if you eat an L3, it could be devastating. So uh, feel feel much more confident that I have that invulnerability boost active. Uh, it also it could have been nice to have the uh, you know the, the the power start one boost as well, uh, just because if you can get an early petrify in the fight, that that will greatly help in terms of uh, controlling Hyperion's power. Uh, but you can see here that the debuffs that I'm landing on this guy, they are not ideal. Uh, petrify are, are is, the, is the last possible buffs, or, or I'm sorry, debuffs that I can get on this guy. I get all four of the other ones going before I get a, my first petrify. So uh, pretty pretty frustrating when that happens, but. You know, that's that's just the nature of Void. Sometimes the RNG is uh, in your favor, and sometimes it's not. Luckily, Hyperion was willing to throw his specials this entire fight, so I never had to uh, face an L3. 
and uh, you know he he does go down uh, pretty cleanly here, uh, especially now that I have Fear of the Void and I time it out so that I get the first debuff up pretty quickly, and he's just going to be taking a ton of damage. I got a, uh, an extra Petrify going, so he's actually losing power at this point uh, with his buffs, and down he goes. All right, so uh, Hyperion, you know, can sometimes be a problem on that node, but uh, it goes down pretty cleanly, and that finishes up the first half of this war here with uh, my initial uh, path six. We're moving on to path seven. I've got a green goblin mini boss here, and of course my uh, my three minute boost is now expired, but that's all right. I don't think I need a three minute boost to take down this green goblin. Pretty similar node to the last one with buffet and recovery. There is no limber, however, so I can uh, parry as much as I would like, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, this node has more HP, I believe, than the than the last one. That's the uh, that's the one thing about this fight is uh, typically it takes a little bit longer to uh, bring down the enemy. Uh, but as long as I get those petrifies up and, and uh, get dexterity buffs on myself, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, Green Goblin, he's always a little bit uh, of a weird fight for me. Uh, I feel pretty confident in evading both his special 1 and special 2. However, the animation is a little bit funny. Uh, it just just the way that he kind of lunges at me, I always feel like I'm going to get hit by his specials. Um, I actually don't get hit by a single special this fight, and typically I don't. It's just, you know, just something about it that uh, is a little bit uneasy for me. See, like the way he lunged with his L2 there, uh, it's a little bit weird. Um, I, I, I do prefer to, to dodge the L2, uh, just because I'm not taking any kind of block damage from, you know, the L1 with those... Uh, those laser beams uh, can be kind of annoying at times, so uh, I do like to push him to his uh, to his L2. But then there are times where, yeah, I just I kind of bait out the L1 just to uh, just to just to make sure that if he does get a couple hits on me, he doesn't push his power meter too far or anything like that. But uh, you can see here, uh, he is almost down at this point. I've got Fear of the Void active. I've got a couple of debuffs. He's uh, taking a whole bunch of degen damage at this point. Uh, my regular attacks, they're starting to get some uh, really good crits in there, actually. And finally, he does uh, degen out, and he goes down. All right, next fight. This is the Aggression Armor node, and we have a tech champion here. As always, there's always a tech champion on this node, whether it's going to be Infinity Man or not. People like to uh, do a little fake out on this node, so it's it's typically a tech champion I've seen. Um, just I'm satisfied with my, my current uh, boost. Not going to uh, pop a three minute boost on or anything like that. And it is Sentinel. Okay, Sentinel. Uh, I'm not the best at fighting Sentinel. I know to uh, you know not repeat your same attacks. So I'm trying my best here to not give him any analysis charges and start out pretty well. Um, but then you know. Things, <laughs> things, uh, you know, he starts building up some analysis charges pretty quickly here. Uh, and eventually I'm just like, you know what, screw it. I'm going to be spamming special ones. He's going to gain a ton of analysis off of that anyway. Every time I uh, hit him with a special one, he's going to gain 20 analysis charges now. Um, but I like I like hitting him with the special ones. It, it just, the, the degen damage uh, adds up so quickly that uh, I don't want to do anything else. So uh, I say screw it and, and just start doing my normal combos for the most part. And he's already up to 80 analysis charges. He's going to hit 100 before we know it. Uh, I, I know I, I'm, I'm, pr I'm fairly comfortable at dodging his specials, but uh, his special 1 in particular is what I like to keep him to. Uh, special 2 at times can be pretty annoying. So yeah, if I can keep this guy to a special 1, if, as long as he's willing to throw them and doesn't get me backed against the wall, uh, then I'm happy. I was getting a little bit worried there that he wasn't going to throw it for a moment, but uh, he does end up throwing it. Got Fear of the Void active, I've got a couple of debuffs going, he's taking a whole bunch of degen damage, and at this point I'm feeling pretty confident in the fight, especially if I can get this last special 1 off. And yeah, he's taking 857 degen damage, doesn't matter how much HP this guy has, that is a lot of degen. And he will go down in just a moment, and plop, Timber goes the Sentinel. Okay, we've got a couple more fights here. One l last normal fight, and then we do have some mini-boss action this war as well. And this is a recovery node, arc overload, and a cosmic champion, and I'm thinking this is King Groot. It's usually King Groot on this node. Uh, it's a rank 4 champion. Uh, I don't see any rank 4 Cosmics in the profile, but I'm thinking King Groot all the way. Even if it wasn't King Groot, I don't think it really matters which uh, Cosmic Champion is here. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'm going to have too, too much trouble. So I pop on a 15% health boost, 
And I'm also going to put on a combat regen boost just to top myself off and try to save on potions. Uh, I had a combat regen that was uh, uh, going to be expiring in a few days in the overflow, so I'd rather do that and, and try to save potions wherever I can. So, uh, go ahead and sure enough, it is King Groot, and boom, I get clobbered immediately. Dude, he just cocks back and, and hits me with a heavy attack right to start out the fight. Uh, that threw me off completely. Uh, I, I do recover here and uh, get him to switch into his healing phase, this way I can land some debuffs. Um, but wow, what a start. Uh, I was pretty happy to have this regen boost on just to give myself a little bit of, uh, a little bit, little bit of that health back. Uh, I thought I was going to get topped off with that regen, but uh, that heavy attack, no, no, no. Uh, but it's alright. We get him back in the healing phase and start to uh, get some more debuffs going. Uh, hopefully he throws his L1. Hopefully he cooperates. That's what's going through my mind. Uh, I, I can push him to an L2. Uh, I don't think it's really a problem dodging his L2, but... Uh, you know, just to get some clean openings on his L1, you know, why why do anything else? Uh, I do go for some parry stuns here just to put the debuffs on him to try to get him back into the healing phase. I uh, don't quite get him into the healing phase fast enough, and one of my debuffs gets eaten uh, by the Furies. That one almost, the, the, the one that I just triggered there almost got eaten too. I just barely uh, timed that correctly. That was, uh, honestly, that was probably accidental at that point. Uh, that was too close. Um, but anyway, we're about to get him into Fear of the Void territory. And now I just got to get rid of these four uh, Fury buffs as quickly as possible. Resonate will help to do that if they trigger, but they don't trigger. Uh, so yeah, we got to parry stun him to, uh, to get rid of those things. And now we can finally start triggering the L1s again. Uh, so here we go. Get a couple of... Uh, ooh, got lucky on the RNG this time. We get the Petrifies real early. So Fear of the Void plus two Petrifies. Oh yeah, he's going to be going down nice and quick. Got a couple of other debuffs going for the uh, the Despair. And yeah, next time that Arc Overload kicks in. Oh yeah, look at, it. Look at the Health Drain. Look at that Health Drain. It's beautiful. And down goes King Groot. Okay, we've got uh, one last fight. And I'm trying to get to this fight as quickly as possible while also making sure that I don't teleport to the... To the uh, the wrong node, fumble and uh, misclick a little bit there. Meant to click on a uh, saber tooth, not the score. Uh, and okay, I've got 15 seconds left on the regen boost, so we need to get into this fight immediately. This is a strike back and recovery node, so uh, of course saber tooth is going to be healing a lot more than normal off of his uh, off of his, uh, his healing passives there. Uh, and strike back is going to cause him to gain a bar of power when I activate my special. And Sabretooth, I really like to keep to a special one only. So the idea here is to get him to use a special one, and then I'm going to attack into him, not with a 5 combo, just immediately throw the L1. This way he does not get to a special two, and just get him cycling that special one over and over again. Now I have a Petrify uh, debuff on him, so I know he's not going to gain as much power if I throw an L1, but I'm still trying to play, play it a little bit cautiously here. So I want him to throw another special before I'm comfortable using my special one again. Uh, we go ahead and actually, oh, that's right, I, uh, I kind of forgot I don't spam the special in this case. Uh, I was getting backed uh, cl uh, up against the wall a little bit uh, more than I was comfortable with, so I actually opted to save and hold for my L3. Uh, kind of forgot about that. So yeah, I'm saving for the L3, just making sure that uh, I can get myself out of this jam that I'm currently in, if needed. Uh, but of course, as long as he's willing to throw his specials, I'm, I'm also comfortable doing that. And I'm sitting at a good health total, so I don't mind uh, taking a few block shots if I need to. And the fight was about to be over, and I said, you know what? Let's get Sentry another kill. He's not going to be getting that many kills this season. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's have him get one more. Uh, so yeah, Sentry finishes things off, and that is my final fight for this war. So we're now two wars in, two of twelve wars, and I still have not died. Very happy with that. Ten more to go to have a flawless season. Hopefully I can pull it off. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, for Loki, we did take the victory against uh, BR Sup, uh, but it was a good war to you guys, close war, and maybe we'll come across each other again throughout this season. Either way, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next war. Take care.